And wow, okay, Samsung. I gotta say, props to you guys. Hey guys, it's Max. We just got in the brand new Galaxy Book Pro from Samsung, and you can pick one of these up for $999 with an OLED display, and the rest of the specs and the design seems like it's gonna be super competitive with the M1 MacBook Air. So today, we're gonna test out everything from the display, the webcam, microphones, keyboards, trackpads, along with performance. And we actually have some brand new tests uh, that are gonna be very exciting and might show some major differences between the actual real world usage that we've been experiencing. So first off, my impression, this thing is definitely light. It kind of reminds me, geez, it kind of reminds me of the 12 inch uh, Retina MacBook and the weight on this thing comes in at 2.2 pounds compared to 2.8 pounds for the MacBook Air. You could definitely tell the difference in your hand. I never thought I would say this, but the MacBook Air actually feels heavy right now compared to this thing. And what's weird is that even though it was so lightweight, it does not feel cheap. The aluminum feels nice. The body here feels solid as well. I remember the LG Gram, that was lightweight, but it definitely felt cheap. So overall, so far I'm impressed. And let's look at these ports, this is crazy. Look at this HDMI port that actually has the bottom cut out in order for it to fit. And then of course we have a couple USB type C's. One is Thunderbolt 4. And on the other side, we have a USB type A port also with the bottom cut out. Uh, who says that you can't fit full size ports in such a small machine? Samsung just proved Apple wrong. We have a headphone jack and a micro SD card slot compared to just two USB. USB-C ports. As far as thickness, they are quite similar. The MacBook Air slightly thinner at the wedge side and then a little bit thicker on the back. I honestly feel like Samsung should have called this the Galaxy Book Air if they're gonna copy that kind of a naming scheme because it is tiny. And one thing I'm noticing is this thing is a fingerprint magnet. I swear my fingers are not that dirty or oily, but this thing picks up everything. Uh, so now let's go ahead and do a hinge test. All right, and wow, I actually was not expecting that. I thought because this thing is so lightweight, it would just flop around, but they balanced that pretty well. And we have the Intel Evo logo, which is crooked, that really bugs me. And we have an Energy Star logo, which is very interesting. If this Intel processor is an Energy Star, I wonder what the M1 is in relation to that. You guys let me know uh, what you think this should be called down in the comment section below. Let's go ahead and power up this machine. And obviously you guys could see, we definitely have some difference. The display is a lot shorter. It is a 16 by nine display, but we will be testing out this OLED screen here in just a little bit. And one thing I wanna to mention to you guys is that along with this test, we are going to do another video where we're gonna run Windows 10 with parallels on the M1 MacBook Air and compare the real world performance compared to buying an actual Windows laptop. You guys hit that subscribe button if you guys wanna see that video. You guys can also help us reach 1 million subscribers before the end of the year, which is our goal. We would really appreciate it. So it looks like it actually came dead out of the box, which is super frustrating. That doesn't happen with Macs. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this thing in and I guess we're gonna have to switch it to the opposite side that way it can be plugged in and charging. All right, we are up and rolling and both of these have a fingerprint scanner to log in so they are even. I do miss the Windows Hello sign-in which I love and it's awesome, but at least these are similar. Now let's go ahead and before we get into the keyboards and trackpads, I don't see any speakers here. This machine weighs 2.2 pounds, so I'm really curious how does the sound quality compare? And guys, I need your honest opinion. When we told you guys we're gonna stop using this song, so many of you guys said, no, keep it, we love it. And then we go back and people are complaining, saying, no, find something else. So we need to hear your opinions and please go and suggest some songs that are no copyright that we can use for this test and the one with the most upvotes we will go for. All right guys, I don't even have to ask for you to comment below. There's no comparison. 
The Samsung is quieter, a lot quieter. It's a lot more flat sounding compared to this loud, rich experience with great highs, great bass. If you're gonna watch movies or listen to music with the built-in speakers, it's the MacBook Air all the way. And now let's compare the keyboard and the trackpad. I have been typing a bit as I was downloading programs that we are going to test. And the keyboard is about average. It does feel a little bit springy and it's not too loud, which is good. But the overall feel doesn't compare with some of the other Windows laptops and of course the Magic Keyboard on the MacBook Air. And with that trackpad, of course, uh, our Force Touch trackpad, it's amazing. It there's no complaints, there's no comparison. Where this thing, it is your standard diving board design and the clickiness, there's a big difference between the top and the bottom. It definitely is, I would say probably about average, maybe slightly below average. And now let's talk about the displays and this is where the Galaxy Book Pro should shine with this OLED panel. But first, let's talk about resolutions in the aspect ratio. So this is a 16 by nine display, which is why we see more vertical space here and at the bottom, this also has this large chin because of that. And maybe Samsung is trying to go for that chin look just like the new IMAX. So maybe that's getting popular. But personally, I love having a 16 by 10 display for productivity with the screen size and even better, a three by two. A lot of Windows laptop companies are switching to that. Samsung is sticking with 16 by nine. Now, the other thing that stands out to me is the sharpness or the detail. I can clearly see with all this text that it is not as sharp as Apple's 218 pixels per inch screen. Here we have about 160. So even though it's OLED, it just doesn't look sharp. Now the benefit is battery life and we'll talk about that in just a bit. Now a huge benefit for OLED displays are the rich, deep black colors where we have pure black and just nice contrast. So I opened up a trailer right here and looking at it, the weird thing is that the contrast is actually better on the MacBook Air, even though it has a standard LCD panel. Now colors are a little bit more vibrant on the OLED screen, but the, the actual blacks, they are more gray than the LCD screen. What? And then with that, <laughs> it's also more reflective. Of course, the chin here is really shiny, but the actual screen itself is more reflective as well. And when you add in that lower resolution, that really has me thinking, is it worth using an OLED display when you can have an LCD that looks better? And of course, Apple doesn't make uh, the screens here. I know LG and Samsung make screens for Apple. So that is just really surprising. And now let's compare the microphones and the webcams. This is the quality that you get from the Samsung. We do have two microphones that are facing me right on top of the screen, which is great but you guys will be able to judge the video and the microphone quality for yourselves. And this is the webcam and microphone quality from the MacBook Air. So go ahead and let me know down in the comment section which one looked better and which one sounded better to you. And now let's get into our performance tests. We do have some new testing and I'm excited to run these because we are gonna have this laptop plugged in for full performance. We'll also check it unplugged with Geekbench. And as I start the CPU test here, I do have to say that we do not have the 999 dollar base model. I wanted to order that, but for some reason, Samsung's only shipping that out later. So this is the upgraded i7. So you get the better chip compared to M1. Both do have eight gigs of RAM. All right, guys, we have a result, and this is actually probably the highest single core score that I have seen. Multi-core score is also very good, but of course the M1 beats it out, even though this is a base MacBook compared to the higher end i7. And of course that is plugged in. Now, one thing I wanna mention is that the i5 also scores very, very similarly to the i7 in our testing. So if you want to buy one of these, pick up at the $999 version. I wouldn't spend the extra money. Now, I also want to mention that I did hear the fan spin up pretty early on in this test, which was interesting. And now I want to run run test unplugged because they're saying energy star on here. Let's see if they're trying to preserve so much energy that the performance is just going to fall flat on its face. We will give it the best performance option here and let's run that again. All right, the fan has been running, meaning that we are getting good performance. So it's almost done. Let's see what we get. And wow, okay, Samsung. I gotta say props to you guys. The score is almost identical. Let's go back right here, 1550 to 1512. And the multi-core score, it actually went up a little bit. And that is 
so refreshing to see that compared to the last few Windows laptops that we have tested. So, Energy Star, can I peel a sticker off? <laughs> I'm glad it's not Energy Star. I'm glad it's using more power to give you full performance on battery, that's awesome. And now let's take a look at the graphics. We are running Vulkan and Geekbench here compared to Metal. I also have another really great graphics test coming up right after this, but let's see how these stack up. All right, and wow, I cannot believe that Samsung is pulling this off in a machine that weighs two pounds and is this slim and light. What are you guys doing, Dell and whoever else is out there that we reviewed, LG, and much thicker machines where we're getting this level of performance? So we have basically 16,000, 15,911 compared to 90,000. So the M1 MacBook Air is about 20% faster in terms of graphics. But now let's go ahead and close this and see how that applies in the real world. Now we're gonna test out the brand new 3D Mark Wildlife cross platform test that is optimized for metal. It does look different the way it tests on the systems, but we have confirmed it and the results um, stack up and it is designed for these new Apple Silicon M1 chips. And we have our results here and this is where we have a much bigger difference. Well, we have about 50% higher score or better frame rate for the M1 MacBook Air. And that just shows how much optimization Apple has made in terms of gaming. They have a bunch of special techniques that they're using to maximize the FPS. So we have 50% difference compared to only 20 when we tested out Geekbench. And now let's get into our real world tests. I have Adobe Lightroom opened up right here, which is now optimized for the M1. And I'm gonna do this a little bit differently this time. Some of you guys asked to use the spot healing brush uh, because that usually lags for you guys and it's not something we've tested before. So let's go ahead and click at the same time. And that actually was faster or maybe it just didn't do a good job. I don't know, obviously it didn't get healed here. <laughs> here it got healed. Let's try that one more time. All right, I have a different photo here. Let's try that again in a tougher spot. Okay, it is fairly close. And as far as responsiveness, if we're zooming in, wow, well, we're actually getting choppiness on the Samsung where the M1 is perfectly smooth. And let's just go ahead and switch through a few of these photos. These are large raw photos with a bunch of corrections. And it's pretty much hit or miss. Sometimes it's the same, sometimes one or the other is faster. And now let's go ahead and select all these images and we're gonna export all 50. Looks like so far we're about on par and it's interesting to see how much wattage this thing is using. It actually kicked down, it was at 26 watts, and that's using both the CPU and a lot of the GPU as well. So it looks like Lightroom is fairly well optimized. And after a bit, it does look like the wattage goes down to get the temperature down. It was a little over 90 degrees Celsius at first. Now it's hovering right at 85, which seems like that's exactly where Samsung wants it. Whereas our MacBook Air is running at 93, 94 degrees Celsius now, more than halfway through. Of course, it is fanless, so it's completely silent. Whereas this Samsung, even though it's powerful, a lot of times, even when we're not doing anything, we hear the fan spinning up and running to keep it cool. No way, is a Samsung actually gonna beat out the M1 in an optimized app? And bam! It actually beat out the M1. The M1 is close. This is what happens when you have really good performance and you're not limiting the performance of your laptop like a lot of others are doing. And with that, of course, we are plugged in this time. But Samsung, I saw they have their own mode uh, called Samsung mode instead of balance, which the fans are spinning up but the performance is good. All right, we are done there. So finally, the M1 chip has been beat, at least in this test. We have four minutes and one second for the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro compared to four minutes and 25 seconds for the M1. Now let's go ahead and close this and we are gonna head into Photoshop and look at that, look at that desktop on both. Adobe said that this version of Photoshop is also optimized for Apple Silicon. And the first the test that I wanna do is their new super resolution. Now we did this with uh, the different computer, the Huawei unplugged on battery, and it was way slower, dramatically slower. So I'm really curious, now that the Samsung has beat this out in Lightroom, how will this compare? All right there, bam, we just finished. That was way faster than the Huawei on battery power, dramatically faster. It took 53 seconds to do this, to quadruple the resolution, use the AI algorithm, but 
our M1 MacBook Air. And if you guys didn't see that video, go ahead and pause and just vote down in the comment section. Tell us how long you think this took with the M1. It took 13 seconds compared to 50 three seconds. And that just shows the power of the machine learning that is built in, that is used for things like this. And now we are gonna do an HDR test. So I have all these images over here. I'm gonna select all of them and we're gonna merge to HDR. The M1 just finished, took a minute and 37 seconds, but here we are sitting around and waiting. Oh, bam, it just got done. Took five minutes and 13 seconds compared to a minute and 37 seconds. So who knows, maybe machine learning is actually being used for HDR now. And now for our last test, we're gonna take a look at video editing. Premiere Pro is still in beta for M1, but there was just an update. And since this machine has been so powerful, I wanna see how it can compare to the previous laptops that we tested that kind of suck for video editing. So right now we're playing back. I have dog ears enabled, meaning that I can see the frame rate here. Oh, and actually, <laughs> It's at the default to half quality. All right, I actually thought it was doing great there. Let's check it back again. We'll give it a chance. All right, so, yep, there we go. We are getting a stuttery mess, playing back at seven, eight, 10, 13, 12 frames per second, about half the quality, but you can play back if you lower it down, whereas with the M1, it is playing back perfectly at 24 frames per second of full quality with the effects applied, film grain applied, all of that. So it looks like when you're combining CPU and GPU, uh, definitely the M1 is coming ahead. Of course, we're gonna go ahead and export this five minute project. So it looks like Adobe has actually increased the performance for M1. It's taken about seven minutes estimated time for this five minute project. It used to be from nine minutes to 12 minutes. So they keep making it faster. On the Samsung, we're getting roughly 12 minutes total time as for the estimate. And these are fairly close. So it looks like as far as video ed editing performance, this is similar to say like a Dell XPS um, and maybe the Microsoft Surface Laptop 4, very similar performance, but uh, the M1 is ahead, getting you know close to twice as fast now for video editing. So what is our final verdict? Well, the first thing that shocked me is how lightweight this machine is. First, I thought it was 2.2 pounds, then it actually is just under two, what I found online. And with that thinness and lightness, the performance is beating out much bigger and heavier Ultrabooks uh, that we've tested and unplugged, it also performed great. Now, of course, it has that OLED display. The contrast isn't as good as I hoped, but I think that might just be the reflectivity layer, whereas Apple has a really great one that they use. And it actually beat the MacBook out in some tests. So overall, the M1 is still faster, especially for video editing. But if you're doing regular use and you wanna get great performance, unplugged, uh, the Samsung does offer that. And then you can actually buy one for $9.99 with the i5 that is not much slower and you still get the same machine, same ports, same display. So overall, if you're looking for a Windows laptop that can keep up with an M1, at least for some of those photo tasks and web browsing, it's gonna give you great performance for a great price. This definitely is a good option and it definitely surprised us. But of course, with the M1, the speakers are a lot better, the display is better. I like the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Keyboard trackpad is better. Video editing performance is better as well. And the battery life, real world usable battery life, that is better as well. So there you guys go. We'll leave links in the video description. You can actually pick one up right now for 900 bucks which is a killer price. And if you guys wanna see another video of us comparing this machine with Windows 10 against the M1 running parallels running Windows 10, make sure you guys click that circle above to subscribe and help us reach our goal of 1 million subs by the end of this year. That'd be awesome. This has been Max and I will see you in the next video.